If you're watching and listening to this presentation, you've taken the first step to doing well in English 3050. In this presentation, I'll tell you a little bit about myself and how I like to teach online courses, and then give you some tips for doing well in the class. I'll give you a tour of the Blackboard site and explain how best to use it to understand your assignments, take quizzes, and submit both review drafts and final versions of your assignments. I'll also provide a brief overview of our assignments this semester and do my best to show you the difference between an A paper, a B paper, and a C paper. You'll then take a short quiz that will be worth one point of 100 toward your final semester grade. I've been teaching at Wayne State for many years now, and technical writing is my undergraduate specialty. Before I decided to become a writing professor, I worked for about 15 years as a paralegal at a large law firm in Cincinnati, Ohio. So now you know two things about me. I've worked in what people sometimes call the real world, although it's no more real than academia, trust me, and I have quite a few years of experience with workplace writing. To get to know a little bit more about me and to get a preview of one of your semester assignments, take a look on Blackboard at my professional bio a miniature version of which is now on your screen. You'll find it in the Assignment 2 folder because you'll be writing your own bio for that assignment. I like to teach online much as I teach in the classroom, but I'm sure you realize an online class presents challenges for both students and instructors. I provide an abundance of materials to help you understand what I want you to produce for the class, and I provide it in multiple forms at multiple locations. In technical writing, we call this technique purposeful redundancy. In accordance with this principle, I provide different forms of documents for people who learn better by reading or by seeing diagrams, for example. And I make sure that you can work your way through the materials on the site without missing a thing, pretty much no matter where you look. I also try very hard to respond to email questions promptly, but keep this tip in mind. I only guarantee that I will be online between noon and 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. If you send me a message after 3 p.m. on Friday, in other words, you might not get an answer until Monday, so plan your communications accordingly. To do well in this class, first of all, use the handbook as a handbook. That means you use it referentially, referring to the sections designated on the calendar, and probably other sections, as a practical guide to what you should produce. You won't read the whole thing straight through as you might read books for other classes. The handbook is arranged alphabetically by topics ranging from the proper use of A and AN, or how to avoid affectation in your language, which is an important topic to the you viewpoint of technical writing, or the proper use of your and your. The authors apparently could not think of a suitable entry beginning with the Z, and at the moment, neither can I. Also, keep up with the schedule. I provide weekly folders on the Blackboard site that show you exactly what you should be working on that week, and that include any new materials you will need to get going. Watch the PowerPoint descriptions of the assignments, because doing so is something like attending a short class. I always give you a little bit of extra information as I talk about the assignment that should help you to do better than you would otherwise. Each PowerPoint description includes a voiceover, and I've compressed the files so they open up as quickly as possible. I also provide them in .mov and .wmv formats, and also on YouTube. And if all else fails, Possibly if you use a Mac, I provide screenshots of the slides and the text of the voiceover in a PDF file for every PowerPoint. Turn in review drafts so I can tell you whether you're on the right track for your assignment. The review drafts are optional and I don't take off automatic points if I haven't seen a draft, but to be perfectly honest, Students who turn in review drafts usually do better on the final assignments because I've told them what they need to revise. But also keep this tip in mind. Don't send an incomplete or sloppy draft. 
I put a lot of work into comments, and if I realize I'm going to spend more time on my comments than you spent on your draft, I'll just send it back to you with the message that you need to do a better draft in order to earn comments on it. Keep in mind that while you may send review drafts to me early, I will not start reading or commenting on them until the stated due date on the calendar. When I do respond, I'll send you comments and a virtual grade, which I will enter in the Blackboard gradebook, but then remove when you send all your final documents through the link to your job seeking website at the end of the semester. You'll then receive new grades on each assignment and on the website as a whole. Also, take the quizzes. They start out very easy and do get more complicated, and they add up to 5% of your grade, which means, mathematically speaking, that if you don't take the quizzes, you're not at all likely to get an A in this class, since the cutoff for an A is 93 of 100 points. Follow instructions for naming and formatting your documents correctly. I ask you to name your documents using your last name and the name of the assignment with a version number because that way when I download them they all wind up in alphabetical order in my files. If you don't use the correct name, I may very well never find your document. The official naming convention for this class is, as I said, your last name, assignment name, V number. All review drafts are V1 when you send them to me no matter how many versions you may have done before you send them. The final versions do not need separate document names as they will be included on your job seeking website for me to read. By formatting, I mean two things. First of all, I ask that you submit all your review drafts in Word format or an equivalent because it's easy for me to write comments in the margins, track changes, and so on in Word but I ask that you format all of your final assignments in PDF so that the layout of your documents doesn't change when I look at them on your website. Layout is the second thing I mean by formatting. Each document should look like what it is to a professional writer. Memos must use memo format, letters must use letter format, instructions must use instructional format. With the possible exception of the last assignment of the semester, a research or white paper, all of your documents must use block style for paragraphing and, in addition to the examples in your handbook, I've provided a web link to a site that explains what block formatting is and what it looks like. I do deduct points if you make formatting mistakes because this is, after all, technical writing. Finally, as I've just said, but bears repeating, remember that you're engaged in the process of technical writing, which may be very different from any other kind of writing you're accustomed to doing, other than, for example, lab reports. Technical documents are written for readers who are in a big hurry all the time, so they must make use of efficient writing and formatting techniques. These include, for example, writing succinctly, which is to say using as few words as possible, using short paragraphs so that people don't get discouraged by a solid page of words, using informative headings that busy readers can skim without even reading your paragraphs if they're in a hurry, and still understand what your text is about, using substantive, not merely decorative, images tables or other graphics to make important points for readers who can absorb pictures better than words. Using everyday language for the most part, using technical jargon only when necessary, and providing brief definitions of jargon for non-specialist readers. I demonstrate those characteristics in everything I write for you so that you'll have a model to follow. Here, for example, is a screenshot of the first two pages of Assignment 1, showing my use of short paragraphs, headings, some modest imaging in everyday language. Now, here's the same text with the formatting removed. See how awful it looks and how much you don't want to read it? 
Plus, how well would you understand what I wanted you to do if you had to read a text like this? Those are just some basic characteristics of technical writing. You'll learn these and a few more this semester. But we can sum up reader expectations succinctly as well this way. Technical readers react to three things about a text in this order. One, what it looks like. That's why formatting is so important. Two, what it says and how quickly. And three, what it will allow them to do. Keep these ideas in mind as you start and continue to write this semester. I've already shown you a few screenshots of various locations on the Blackboard site, but here's a shot of the whole opening page. The buttons on the left will take you to the orientation section, which includes this presentation, and then to the syllabus and calendar, where you see not only those documents, but also a list of assignments, quizzes, and due dates for the semester. You can use these materials along with the assignment folders, which include the point and letter grade scale for the assignments of various values. Or you may use the weekly folders, which include a to-do list from the calendar along with any new materials you need for that week's work. For example, in the week one folder, you will find both this orientation PowerPoint and the folder for assignment one. Week two includes the folder for assignment two, which you'll need to read that week along with some materials on visual design for resumes and so on. I've also provided links to websites that you should be using, including not only the help desk for technical problems you may encounter with Blackboard. And listen carefully, I am not able to solve technical problems with Blackboard or email for you but also the special library resources page developed for English 3050, some MLA citation guides and tools, the University Writing Center, and others. Use these resources. They'll help you get a better grade. Some of your quizzes are automated on Blackboard and some you will email to me. They each require that you look over some materials and those materials are available above each quiz at the quizzes button. This screenshot of a prior semester's quizzes page because I don't have this semester's quizzes done yet. Remember, you have five quizzes, which together account for 5% of your grade. You will get one quiz point for each quiz that you complete successfully, which means with a score of 90%. They're all open books, so you should have no problem scoring at least 90%. You will, however, get a half quiz point if you score 80%. A document on Blackboard at the Assignments button includes a three-page table describing all the assignments that you will be creating this semester, along with examples of topics that would work for each of them. You really don't need to choose topics for Assignments 1 and 2, which are more restrictive than the remaining ones. Assignment 3 is an important one as it proposes the topics for Assignments 4, 5, and 6. I have a sample proposal for the topic of a dog park on Blackboard that shows how I would propose to research dog parks and then produce a related set of instructions for Assignment 5, which would be titled How to Prepare Your Dog for a Visit to the Dog Park, and an infographic that could be used to persuade people to use the park safely. The proposal also describes a white paper that would present research about the benefits, along with the disadvantages, and typical features of dog parks. Titled, A Dog Park for Ferndale, my white paper would be targeted to Ferndale residents as well as City Council and the Parks Department to encourage the city to create a dog park. As it turns out, before I got around to writing a white paper, the city did indeed create a dog park. The job seeking website that I've mentioned already is not an assignment for this class, strictly speaking. It is the means by which you will connect me to your final documents for assignments one through six. If you already have a website or blog, you may use that existing space. You may want to create a website specifically for looking for employment if you don't already have one. 
And a Google search for a free website builder yields many links, including those to Wix.com, GoDaddy, and WordPress, and so on. Please don't spend money on a website for this class, and don't publish the website for this class unless you actually want to use it for job seeking. Briefly stated, the job seeking website is a place where you can put all of your final documents so that you can email the link to me. I'll grade your documents, not really the website, but I do hope that some of you will find the exercise of putting it together useful in the future. Now, you probably want a good grade in this class. Let me start by explaining the usual features of a paper that would get a C, which would fulfill the general education requirement for intermediate communication, and also the prerequisite for English 3060 for those who will need to take that course. A C paper can be described as not adequate for professional readers. A C paper may indeed include most of the content required by the assignment with only minor omissions, but the content is probably not well developed logically in some places. The transitions between sentences and paragraphs may not be smooth, but I can generally tell what the writer is trying to say logically. The document follows correct formatting with only minor flaws. It probably contains more than one incorrect sentence structure, also called syntax, such as a run-on or fragment. Or it may contain all correct sentences, but all in a simple, monotonous structure. It probably contains several incorrect word choices, also called diction, spelling errors and typos, or a combination of these, or a whole lot of one of them. On the screen is a sample of three paragraphs from a C paper, an analysis of two sets of instructions. A B paper can be described as adequate for professional readers, but it needs improvement. A B paper includes all of the content required by the assignment and is well developed logically. A reader would not have to struggle to figure out what the writer intends. The document follows correct formatting. It could contain one incorrect sentence structure, as a run-on or fragment, but it varies its sentence structure to include not only simple, but occasional compound and complex sentences. It could contain one or two incorrect word choices, spelling errors or typos, or a combination of these. On the screen is a sample of three paragraphs from a B paper, also an analysis of two sets of instructions. Finally, the A paper, which in a word can be described as professional in quality, even if it has a couple of minor issues. Like a B paper, the A paper includes all of the content required by the assignment and is well developed logically with smooth transitions between sentences, paragraphs, and sections. The document follows correct formatting, contains absolutely no incorrect sentence structure, such as a run-on or fragment. Its sentence structure is varied and correct throughout. It could contain no more than, let's say, one or two incorrect word choices, or spelling errors, or typos. On the screen is a sample of three paragraphs from an A paper. Now that you've worked your way through this orientation, it's time to take the quiz. You'll find it at the Quizzes button on Blackboard. It's short, sweet, and easy, so be sure to take it to earn your quiz point. Remember, you must complete it by 11.59 p.m. on the due date. So get going, and good luck.